Hello everybody, my name's Drew, and welcome back to more Feed the Beast. And man, I got some sad news for you guys. We've had a bit of a setback. I know, horrible news. We, we had to wait to start the episode off on a great foot by basically telling you guys I had a problem. Well, that problem was we updated the mod pack. Super good for us, because the graphical glitches seem to be more or less gone. We can go downstairs and take a look. You can see that, yeah, the graphical glitches seem to be gone. I did a little more work down here. However, however, you can see that that oil tank is empty and that gas tank is nearly, uh, well, you can see the oil's gone and their fuel's getting kind of, kind of up there again because I had to roll the server back. I know everybody's inhaling going, what? Yeah, no, I know. So here's what happened, guys. Evidently, evidently, there is some sort of error with OpenGL and the nether, and more specifically, really not liking the movement of our, like, crazy, crazy uber miner thing, right? The uh, the tunnel bore machine? Yeah, did not like that. In fact, we when I tried to transition uh, worlds, more often than not, we ended up having a severe tick lag to the point where it totally and completely shut the server down. I got really close to my mic. I don't know. I... Does it help if I get really close to my mic to explain this? Does that does that sound better? No, it doesn't. Um, yeah, uh, man, I I gotta tell you guys, I was so angry. Like I spent probably four, no, five five hours trying to diagnose the problem, like searching through internet, dying to, like learning to try and figure out what the stupid error codes in Minecraft actually even friggin' mean. Uh, yeah, that's no mean feat, by the way. In case anybody was wondering, yeah, it sucks. But at the end of the day, had to roll the server back. We lost a bit. Uh, you can see that the uh, the facade blocks are working nicely again. F facade? Facade blocks are working well again. So we can start covering things up and and actually back on track on that. I just I was really, really angry and really upset that uh, that, that happened. Like, I had to take a break from Minecraft for, like, like, like a day. Um, so, yeah, it, it was a real big setback um, after the last episode. Because it's like, man, it came out, everything was working great, and I was like, okay, great. The, the episode came out on Tuesday, and I thought, okay, perfect, later on that day I can record, It'll, everything will be great. Yeah, no, spent the rest of the day trying to troubleshoot. I had to roll it back. So we have it, We have no tunnel bore machine right now. We even lost some of our B stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, everybody's like, man, how far back did we go? Well, not too far. It actually gave me an opportunity to uh, to re rethink this layout that we were working on in here and so I decided to just go ahead and start moving things around and get a better uh, picture of things and you can see I put some of the blood lantern uh, spots up here so that they're actually illuminating the room now and I put all of our machines back against the wall where they belong so that we're able to start really making moves here um, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do for the B archival system oh, I'm gonna fall through the hole here is I wanna put um, I want to put a pillar up of uh, cable and have an interface on all sides or, or hear me out, I'll put it all underground and we'll have a terminal that's in each room at the door to each room on one side. Like we'll put it, uh, I don't even know right now, like we'd put it like kind of here, here-ish, the one there, we'd have another one maybe over here somewhere. Like on one of the flat walls I would probably want it, but this one has no flat walls. Yeah, we. I don't. I don't know. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is putting it in the center, so that there is a terminal on every side. One crafting terminal. The rest can be regular ME terminals. I don't care too too much about crafting in here because we're realistically not doing any crafting. It's strictly storage and accessing that storage. Um, well, I guess we would do some craft. No, we would need crafting because well, as you guys know, I was trying to pull traits off bees, and then I was like, well, how do we we make that happen? Well. After you pull the traits off, you have to take those templates and put them together in another template. Um, so take whatever traits you want with the genetic template, uh, blank template, and then those traits get applied to it, and then you can take that template and apply it to any bee, which is really nice because you can get a bunch of traits going at once. Way more powerful than the extra bee stuff that we used to deal with, right? Uh, so that that's going to be... Oh, what is that? Ow. I hit my hand and I hit the mic stand, so... Sorry for deafening you guys with that strike. I'm sorry, guys. I don't, I don't mean to hit you. I love you. 
Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot we need to work on today. But uh, the main thing is, well, let's get some of this stuff really flowing and get the honey working. So we've got some tanks in the ground here. We've got our mutagen tank. We have our DNA tank. And those are pretty rad. I'm also, uh, also going to have a tank for raw honey and maybe the liquid protein, although I might just keep that within the protein liquefier itself. And then have a, uh, a reservoir just on, or maybe have a reservoir on top. Yeah, that might be a way of doing things. Or better yet, better yet, if I swap the mutagen producer. Man, we're having a real tough time keeping up with power, are we not? Yeah, dog, we are. Wow, did I really just say yeah? Wow. I I have no words, guys. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll see myself out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're having a real tough time with the power gen 2 down here. Just, just for flow, it's... These are really high, high power machines. So what I'm I'm thinking I'm I'm actually going to end up doing here is restructuring the power. I want to move. I'm trying to think. Probably magmatic and fuel would be the way to go. A combination of each, like like six of each, that would be twelve machines total, and give them a second tier power. So they're not crazy draining the fuel that we're going to give them, and at the same time they're going to produce quite a lot of power. It should be more than enough to actually keep here supplied. But uh, in theory, we'll find out. Um, but at any rate, uh, I need to make some more tanks, so we're going to go do that. We're going to put our honey tank in here, and then we're going to construct our lab area for other stuff down below, like our maintenance floor, and uh, and go from there. Now, do I want to get the AE2 stuff rolling on that today? Yeah, you know what? Let's let's do that. Let's, 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 let's do all that today. So let's head upstairs. We're going to make a whole whack ton of stuff. Where is my staff of the traveling to make life easy for us cool alright let's head upstairs here uh, I should have I may even have some tanks left I don't know that I used my whole supply I know that I used like a whole stack of them to make that room do I have oh I have 22 left okay I wasn't sure if I'd made any more uh, I might need more tanks than that so why don't we make a few more of these open block tanks That should be enough. 36 should be more than enough for what we're doing. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to make ourselves a bunch of the other stuff we need, like these. We'll make the blank templates. Why? Oh, because I didn't hit shift. No, I want to shift and click you. So there's our blank. Those we're going to need, of course, the template T button. That's still a bug. I'm not sure where that bug is coming from. Template genetic hmm hmm so there's genetics what are these genetics things I think that's for people it must be for people it's not for us uh, not for the bees anyway I mean it would be for us it's not for the bees bees is their own deal no, why can't I find... Ah, that's what I want. Genetic template. Now, these are a little more expensive, but not by much. Oh, and I can only make them one at a time. Isn't that interesting? Okay, that's fine. Alright, so let's move ahead. Let's go ahead. I should... Do I have any extra pulsating? Do I have... I should have two... Oh, no, I don't have any extra pulsating. I guess I used them all in. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. So what do we need to make? So we got our tanks. Oh, we need to make some squeezers. So we need squeezers. I'm thinking if we make... Oh, I'm at a casing, so I should have a lot of bronze because I put that on auto smelt. Yeah, I do. Should have enough. We should have a, we should have a squeezer for every single centrifuge. I like that idea. So we got those. We're going to need some conduits. I should have... I made more conduits. I do. So let's grab 32 of these. How are we doing on that? 53. Uh, I need to make more. Do I have any energetic? Okay, I've got 62. So why don't we make more of those? I'm going to need two stacks of the ender pearls because we are going to need more power coils. Uh, that is for damn sure. Let's grab those. We'll go over to our alloy smelter. We'll dump all this junk in there and then we'll 
keep going here. Oh, I, I forgot to put that chest back. You know what? That's fine. We're going to actually make that chest right now. See, it's all the little things. I'm like, I'm missing stuff, and I have no idea what it is. So we'll go ahead. We'll, we'll be smart about it this time and put a uh, iron chest there. And now that'll draw directly from that chest, yeah? Perfect. So that'll make our vibrant alloy, as you guys fully know. Oh, I'm out of a... Where'd my carpenter go? I had a carpenter. Oh, you know what? That might got deleted in the update, too. Here, let me make the carpenter. Real quick. I would have thought that that... I would have swore that that was recreated. Oh, god damn it. Because I have my machines back. Which is just like, what the hell, man? Alright, there you go, carpenter. That was weird. I don't know why that happened, but whatever. Moving along. The weird things in this game, man, when things crash and go wrong. Some things restore, some things don't. Uh, oh, we lost some Batania stuff, too, by the way. Mm, everything seems normal. I got a warning when I opened the pack up that some of my Batania stuff was not where I left it, but that does not appear to be the case. It appears that everything is more or less normal. I mean, our, our mana pool is nice and full, so that's something. So I don't know what's missing, but it was like, by the way, that's that's not there anymore. Who knows? No idea. Alright, so we got our tanks, we got our squeezers, we got conduits, we have power. Uh, we'll need to make new power, so let's... Oh. So let's do that too. Let's go. And I'm gonna need more other stuff too. So we got the compression dynamo. Just requires liquid fuel and coolant. That's fine. So we're gonna need to make some aqueous accumulators while we're there, because I wanna use those to cool this guy. Oh, I need transmission coils. should do us right there. So I'm going to make 12 compression dynamos or 6 compression dynamos. Apparently I'll only make one. I might have 10 gears. And I would have swore that I had built more of those. So yeah, I'm going to I'm going to negate negate the the whole I just built 12 compression dynamos. Fuck it. You know what? Fuck it. We'll keep the 12 compression dynamos. Fuel is... Fuel makes a lot of RF. So, we we should be okay. Uh, where do I want to... I guess I'll put that when I get down there. Let's grab our thing. That, the fact that the carpenter is missing is bugging the hell out of me. Now I want to know what the hell else is missing. Because I'm sure it's not the only thing. So let's go back here. And we'll need to make an aqueous accumulator. That's for damn sure. So why don't we open this wall up here. Okay, so that's going to be like that. We got that going. Okay, so we're going to put our compression dynamos... Oh, we'll throw that torch there. So the dynamos themselves will go here. And then we'll have our power tap. Oh, I need to do... Okay, let's dump some stuff out of our inventory that we don't need. Like all these blank templates. Okay, and our those and those can go in there and those can go in there. Okay. Let's go back upstairs. We'll make our English accumulators. And then we'll uh, we should be good to go. I'm thinking only two aqueous accumulators should be sufficient. Don't know why they wouldn't. Of course, that's not enough stuff. Get tension to us there. It's always good to have things in supply. Ugh. 
Freaking buckets, I swear to God. We'll do our usual four. And then I want... What else did I need there? I needed... I needed some more conduits for sure, because I don't want to run out. I also wanted... What else? Got the Acus accumulators. We'll grab an extra bucket. Because I'm going to need some water. Which I don't have up here. I'll need to go downstairs. Uh, we'll need a way to get the fuel down there, but that's fine. We can deal with that at a later point. I just want to get the room set up for now. And uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'll get all that power crap finished, and then uh, we'll pick up with actually doing our, our B stuff. So I'll be, uh, I'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, we're back in action here, and as you can see, our basic capacitor bank is on the plus side. We are gaining, oh, look at that, just over 2,000, around 2,300, I guess it's hovering RF per tick, and that's because we have all 12 of these bad boys running, and they're running at a delightful 160 RF because they had that first tier of upgrade. Everything's gravy. Everything is perfect. Uh, we will need more oil, though. Let's not forget that we are out of oil upstairs, so we will need more. And and that's okay. I should let, let's uh take a quick look at our fuel supply. And uh, and we'll see. Should I feel bad that we're using fuel? Probably. I should probably feel bad about that. Oh yeah, plenty of fuel. We've got 321 buckets. Not using all that much fuel because the fuel to use ratio is really really good. Um it's shockingly good actually. I need to charge up my staff here. So yeah, we're going to go and get working on the uh, underground lab, and that should be pretty fun. Uh, hopefully we'll get to the AE2 stuff. I don't know that we will, but we'll see. I would like to get to that. So we go over here, we're going to dig straight down. I have so there's that guy and we're gonna make the the lower room here relatively square and I can put that back so we want the honey tank to be here uh, where are our tanks they are over here And they'll go right like this. And like we could make the honey tank a little bigger, but eh. No need. Don't need to do that. Look at that. Plan that out freaking perfectly. That does not happen very often. I can tell you guys that much. And you guys should know that much having watched me for so long. Uh, how often do we go to do a project and I don't have the right amount of stuff? Yeah, pretty much every project I've ever done ever. So, be proud of me. I actually accounted for something for once. Ha! Huh. For those of you that don't believe I'm capable, I say nuts to you. Nuts to you. Okay, so we're going to have, yeah, kind of a space like that. I don't know what I want to do for the walls down here. That's a question and a half. Not even... Not even really sure. We'll do something nice. We'll make it look good. We'll put some in. Uh, we'll, I, I think I want to do something different with lighting down here. We'll make it more industrialized to represent that this is sort of a, a laboratory space. So nice, clean, clean, bright fluorescent lights. So probably the the white or gray lights from uh, Project Red should be good. So we've got all this nice space down here to work in, right? Because we'll 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 dig this out as we need. So let's go squeezers. So we've got our squeezers and stuff. Let's grab them out of the chest. Uh, we're also going to need to put down an elevator, but we can do that later. So there's our squeezers and our centrifuges. So let's put some of this junk in there for now. 
Uh, I'm going to need to make a whole bunch of some stuff, though. That's for sure. And the nice part with these squeezers and stuff, so we'll have all the automation running with AE, uh, as I've already said. So what will happen is all this stuff will go in, and then we can have filters or um, interfaces set up to automatically dump all of our cobs, our, our, um, our honeycombs, cobs, honeycombs into the different uh, centrifuges, and they'll, they'll just automatically output them. And then put, uh, we can have everything that needs to go to a squeezer, go to a squeezer, etc, etc, etc. You guys get where I'm going with that, I'm sure. I need that. Because I don't want to have to deal with the stupid slime buggers that pop up. Thankfully, my regular pickaxe is still really fast. So, we do have a fairly sizable area to work with under here, so I'm not really worried about space at all. There you go. And then obviously our last set of tank would go there, and that would be for, I guess, for the protein. But I don't know that we actually need to do that to it. So what I was thinking earlier, I didn't mention this, uh, what I might end up doing then is moving the mutagen producer and the genetic replicator over. Like switching these around so that the DNA extractor um, doesn't necessarily need to be beside it. Like the protein uh, liquefier will go right into the genetic replicator and then we'll write a pipe. I'll run a pipe from the bottom of here up the wall and into the bottom or something like that. I feel like that's probably the easiest way to do. And then we'll just move the mutagen producer over so it's a little closer to here as well. And that should be more than sufficient. How are we doing on the power? Oh, nice. Perfect. Okay, so we've got all this. Here's what I think I should do next. Let's drop down. Let's get these squeezers and things down. Because I want these squeezers spaced out in a way that makes sense. So we can go like that, or probably better yet, like this. Right, they don't react to those, do they? Uh, Power-wise, power-wise we should be okay. We can just run from the top, right? Because we've got that central power line running, which is nice. So there's our squeezers. And uh, you know what? Let's move these over to the right one because I would like to have this be relatively clean. All right, so we'll have it going. Oops. Like that. All right, and now the centrifuges, we're going to move over and space out. The centrifuges will actually have them, I guess, flat down? Best way to do this? So that they're not, because uh, we're going to need to move to maneuver these guys. So we'll have three of the centrifuges feeding these squeezers, which I'm okay with. And we can have uh, relief lines and whatever uh, pulled off, and that's cool. And then I guess we'll put the other three elsewhere. How do I want to do this? You know what, we can put the other centrifuges like, no, no, I don't want to do that because that's going to be for the AE network. I want to have all the AE storage stuff over here and we can run using the uh, the Ender IO conduit stuff. Mm. Let's put them, I have really no idea where I want to put these. Hmm. So you know what, for now, let's just go ahead. We'll, we'll stack them here. We'll do the same sort of procedure. So there's our centrifuges. Like right now in the early stages, we can assume that pretty much all of the honeycombs we're going to be getting are going to go and just be used for honey. And then like all the propolis and uh, uh, beeswax will just get pulled out. Right? We don't need this to, uh, to save those things. And that's, uh, and that's okay by me. Like that. And that gives us more than enough space, I think. So this will have like this and then we can run the honey tube like so right because you want to have your honey up fairly high in the tank so that it's uh, gravity fed uh, and then for these for now we'll need item to go that way 
And that's cool. So let's get some power. Oh, I need more power conduits. Nuts. Like so. Because I only have the two left. Yeah, like that. Let's let's go make some E stuff real quick to to round this episode out, and then we can uh, call her a day. So let's go over here. Do I need a controller? Do you think? Yeah, it's probably better to have a controller. Do I have any left? Oh, I do. I've got a couple controllers left. All oh, right, because I didn't have the. We didn't make the. I'm on board machine, so we have controllers left. I'll grab two. Uh, we'll grab that smart flux cable. We'll need all of that. So we want a drive, so we're going to make ourselves a drive. Or two. Let's make two drives. So I need drive, and now we want a... God damn it. Okay, so there's something that does. CC does that. It does this. Yeah, okay, now you guys actually can see what I'm talking about. It makes these uh, particle effects. I have no idea what that is. Not a clue. Could not begin to tell you. Emmy crafting terminals. So let's make ourselves four regular terminals. Which I can't do. Ah, uh, we add a quartz class. Yeah, we are. So how do I make quartz glass again? Remind me real quick. Quartz glass. Oh, okay, that's actually not that bad. Okay, let's go back to the terminal. Emmy terminal needs some of those. I'm out of annihilation and formation cores. I really should teach the A system to make these automatically, to be perfectly honest. One, two, three, four. And then if I want a crafting terminal, and crafting terminal. Okay. So we can go back downstairs now and we'll quickly set this up. So the center of the room is about here. So if I grab our smart cable, and I want it about that height. Like so. And then because this will be mostly where I'm crafting, I guess, I'll throw the crafting one down there. So any terminal is one crafting terminal. Oh, excuse me, had a coughing fit there. Okay, so that'll go like that. That's pretty cool. And then I guess we'll have our elevator can go there. So that's banging. And then we'll have that connected to a regular ME. Uh, you know what? We'll move this conduit around, I guess. Uh, I'll do that later. But yeah, so that'll come down. There'll be, it'll hook in, it'll run down the wall. We'll have, we're going to put our two drives like such. I might make two more and put them here. So of the two drives, I might make another terminal and put it down here as well so that we have uh, bottom access and then we can start running our other ME cables which I'm probably going to do off screen there and uh, what will happen is I'm going to plan out where exactly I want these to be and once I know exactly where they're going to be um, actually yeah so that's what's going to happen I'm going to plan out exactly where I want them to go and then off of this line right here I will actually put a controller right here it's not powered or anything, so nobody, nobody be amazing yet. So that'll that'll get power through the ME flux cable and whatnot. 
And what will happen is it, uh, there's going to be another set of cables that are going to go up. And then we'll have one extend into this room, that room, and then out. And then we'll go into this room and this room because they're on angles. And same thing over here because we'll have the interfaces going uh, kind of down the back. So we're going to spread them out in sort of a circle pattern. And then they'll have the interfaces on the back to do whatever we need them to do for extraction and whatnot. And then, yeah, I mean, like that'll be how we're going to automate all of our bees. And it'll look pretty cool. I'm going to obviously put cable anchors on these to put some facades on it. I'll make it look cool. I might even use uh, those cool futuristic blocks or something in there so it looks all nice and neat. But, uh, yeah, guys, that pretty much does it for today. I'm really annoyed that we, we got such a setback. But I'm glad it gave me some time to rethink about how I want this room to go and and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to go on a bee foraging expedition between episodes, I think, and try and find some more meadows and forest bees so that we can buffer our stock up and then uh, work our way to getting some seriously high production bees, if at all possible. The, the biggest thing is we need more forest and meadow bees. It's the only way to do it, even with high fertility. We're not going to get any new princesses, which is a real, real uh, drawback for us. So we have to go and find more, right? Uh, at any rate, guys, if you liked the episode, you guys know what to do. Give it a like. You can always find other work I have done in the description box below. And, of course, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, folks. Bye-bye.